And Night Terrors The Flash is written by Alex Pacnadel with art by Daniel Bayliss and Tom Dernick, colors by Igor Monti and Pete Patazis, and letters by Simon Boland. And the story of Barry Allen trying to save Wally West continues as we witness Barry attempt to go back to the stabbing of Wally again and again in hopes to prevent it. However, after so many tries, Barry temporarily stops to go check on Wally and Iris, where we see Barry is now morphing into a grotesque monster, and Iris begs him to stop to be by Wally's side. And it's then that something suddenly shifts, and Barry's mother enters as Iris is no longer there, and tells him that he should never give up. Barry embraces his mother, where we see she is now bleeding from the eyes, but Barry doesn't take notice and decides the best way to save Wally is to get more speed. He heads to the Watchtower, wanting Green Lantern to construct the Cosmic Treadmill once more. However, Hal also begs him to stop, but by this point, Barry is too focused and ends up punching Green Lantern to pieces. And so Hal's hand does what Barry asks when we cut to the 25th century, where Barry attacks Eobard Thawne, the Reverse Flash, with Thawne saying he will defend the museum because he is its curator. The two get into a brawl with Barry, now more monsters than before, killing Thawne and stealing his speed. And it's then that Barry notices his reflection, wondering what he's becoming. But now with the Spear of Destiny in hand and the speed boost from Thawne, Barry runs back in time to try to save Wally once more. And despite his best efforts, Barry is once again halted, but this time by the creature that was in the Speed Force and, upon closer examination, notices it's a horrific amalgamation of himself as they now pull in Claw trying to add him to their body. Suddenly, Barry awakens from his nightmare as he's tackled by Wally West, Barry then sees the devastation he caused, but is also happy to see that Wally is safe, giving his friend a hug. It's then that Wally says he needs to bring Barry up to speed, which closes out this tie-in to Night Terrors. And I'll say, sometimes one of the hardest things about talking about comics and reviewing them issue by issue is that you're never working with the complete story until the very end. Because when it came to issue number one, I remember being fairly underwhelmed with it. It's what I would call a decent flash story, but nothing really out of the norm. Nothing really stuck out as being, you know, straight up nightmare fuel. But then issue number two came out in this tie-in set, and this is everything that I wanted from that first issue. Because here's where we got all of like the cool surreal aspects of what it's like to be in a dream or nightmare, such as Barry's transformation into this monster the more he goes back in time. How Iris is there one minute, but then there's like weird stuff going on with the sky and she disappears but Barry doesn't take notice and instead his mom comes in and even though she's supposed to be dead he's just totally cool about it like oh yeah I guess this is a normal thing and of course her bleeding eyes of horror we also had the thing Barry Allen edition and in a way presenting Thawne as a good guy here because when Barry went forward in time to steal Thawne's speed Thawne's telling Barry that, hey, I'm the curator of this museum. I'm going to protect it even from you. So he was being, in this scenario, the good guy. He was trying to stop Barry from destroying priceless artifacts. And one thing that did carry over from the first issue was this book once again also showcases just how much Barry cares for Wally. Because in context to this particular issue, Barry allows himself to turn into a grotesque monster. For Wally, Barry Allen punches Hal Jordan one of his closest friends into like dozens of little pieces for Wally. And we also can't forget that oh so sweet kiss that Barry bestows upon a lying Wally West. And then of course back to reality with Wally tackling Barry and reminding everybody that yes, he is indeed faster than Barry Allen. That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's the MVP! That's why he's the GOAT! Oh, no! He shows it, we see it, it's a great time. The art, of course, excelled in this issue as well as we get to see, you know, Barry's descent into madness. I particularly like the first two pages and really almost any time we're in the Speed Force, you know, where we get these long stretched out figures and all of these just vibrant colors because it's really cool to look at. It can create some horrific imagery, but it's also kind of beautiful in a way. And overall, Night Terrors The Flash issue number two 
finally makes good on the promise of a nightmare scenario. And also demonstrates that sometimes we gotta be a little patient and good things come to those who wait. And with that, I'm gonna score Night Terrors The Flash, issue number two, a 9.5 out of 10. So Night Terrors The Flash tie-in, issue number two. What did you think about this book? If you've read it, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button, share it with some friends, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and ring that notification bell for more comic book content. And if you're wondering what to watch next, consider one of these two videos. All right, take care, have a great day, and as always, stay geeky.